Thank you for being part of the Oakwood Free Will Baptist Church Ministries. Our prayer is that those who listen to the Word of God will find a greater revelation of God's purpose in their lives. For additional resources, please visit us on the web at www.oakwoodfwb.com. Today, may you be encouraged, strengthened, and refreshed by our message. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Emily. And it is good to have you back, both of you. And uh, we're glad that you're able to be here today. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Romans chapter 5. This is probably one of my favorite passages um, in the book of Romans. I have a lot of favorite passages. <laughs> but um, Romans chapter 5. We're going to begin reading in verse 1. We're going to go all the way through verse 11. The title of the message today is this. We have reason to praise the Lord. We have reason to praise the Lord. Romans chapter 5, beginning in verse 11, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we also have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that this tribulation worketh patience. Patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received the atonement. Let's pray. Father, it is good to be in your house. Lord, I know that this house is just that. It's, it's a place of worship. Lord, our worship ought to be every day, everywhere we go. But Lord, together today, as we worship you corporately, I pray that everything that is said and done would bring honor and glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we're here today not because of ourselves. We're here today not to honor and lift up self. We're not here today to pat each other on the back and talk about how good we are. We're here today to talk about how good you are. We're here today to lift up and honor and glorify your name. Lord, I pray that literally everything that is done would do that. I, Lord, I don't want any glory for myself. I don't want any glory for anyone here today. Save Jesus. Lord, I pray that that would be the case today. I pray, God, that you would help us to take everything that this world would have on our hearts and minds and push it aside and focus totally and completely on you. That one who is the author and finisher of the faith who is now sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Lord, I'm so glad that you loved us enough to die for us while we were yet sinners. And Lord, I pray that today you would speak to us as only you can, or that you would just stir us, make us feel good about ourselves, but God, that you would change us today. Lord, we commit this service to you, this is the most important time that we have together is around the Word. And God, I pray that the Word of God would do as just as it says that it will do. It will pierce to the very depths of our soul, will speak to us, will change us this day. Thank you for your Word. Thank you most of all for Jesus who loved us and died for us. And we pray these things in His name. Amen. Amen. Folks, we have reason to praise today. We have reason to rejoice. When you think about this particular passage, 
the Apostle Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he's kind of going over the benefits of ours uh, that are ours as a result of being a child of God. And these verses explain the great provision that he has given us through the death of Christ by virtue of us placing our faith and trust in him. What he did for us was so great. What he did for us is even unthinkable. To know that for a good person, you and I might be willing to give our lives for. But he did that while we were yet sinners. He died for us. Amen. Folks, there was nothing, Brother Eric Mitch, there was nothing good in and of ourselves. We didn't deserve salvation. God in his mercy and grace extended to us through his grace what we did not deserve. And he withheld with us or hell from us what we do deserve, and that is hell. All of us deserve that. There is nothing good about us, yet He loved us anyway. He loved us while we were yet sinners. Did you notice what verse 8 said? But God commended, that is, He proved His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, He died for us. And those two words basically sum up the whole passage. He did it for us. And because of that, we have reason to praise. We have reason to lift His name and to glorify Him and to praise Him. But I want you to notice there are several things this passage described who we really are. You know, a lot of times we want to talk about how good we are and how wonderful we are. We want people to pat us on the back and talk about how great and wonderful that we are. But the Apostle Paul used words and phrases like this in verse 6. Without strength. That is, we were utterly hopeless without any help of getting to God. That is every person in this world. Every person who is lost before God had no ability to change, no ability to go to God based on his own merit. We have to come through the, the merit of Jesus Christ. We were powerless to escape sin. So he uses the phrase without strength, but then you go a little bit farther. He uses the word ungodly. That is, we were not like anything like God. There's no way we can be anything like God without reverence or fear of God. We were ungodly. That is, we were living our lives exactly the way we wanted to live it, as if God did not even exist. That's the kind of person that we were. We were helpless to change our sinful nature. We live our lives as we please without any regard for God or His will. But he mentions also the word sinners. This word simply means putting in our own language, we miss the mark. We were sinners. There's no way we could miss, we could hit the mark that God had for us, but Jesus Christ did it for us. But then he, in verse 10, he mentions that uh, the word enemies, that is, we were his adversaries. Basically, what the Bible is telling us is that we were lost. We were, we were in control, being controlled by Satan. We were opposed to God. We were his enemies. No matter how much a man may talk of loving God, if that man is unsaved, he is not a child of God. Now, we need to understand that today. Because we talk a lot about, you know, especially in the South, that, oh, this is a good person, this is a good person. He's a good old boy. It doesn't matter how good you are. Without Jesus... We're going to spend eternity in hell. I want you to understand that. Without Jesus, I'm, I'm saying we. Because if I didn't have Jesus, I'm going to spend eternity in hell too. I'm not trying to point at you, point fingers at you. I'm saying everybody without Jesus is going to die and spend eternity in hell. But he loved us, so we didn't have to do that. He loved us. God committed. He proved his love toward us. In that, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Folks, that's something to praise him about today. That's something to praise God about today because we were once enemies of God. We were once sinners. We were once on our way to hell. We were His enemies and yet Christ loved us. And because of Christ, we have a different position with God now. Because of Jesus, because of what He did, we are now a friend of God. We are now His. I want you to notice something that was mentioned. It says, we were yet sinners. Notice how God's love really transcends anything that humanity is able to provide. This shows the utter compassion of Jesus. 
while we were yet sinners. He had compassion on us. By the way, you know the Bible tells us when Jesus looked on the multitude, and I believe He looks on the multitude today and He has the same compassion that He did back in the Bible days. He looked on the multitude. He looks on the multitude and He has compassion because He sees them as sheep having no shepherd. That He has no direction and no purpose. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, He has compassion on you. He looks at you thinking, man, they need me. They need direction and purpose in their life. And I'm going to tell you, folks, without Jesus, there is no purpose. What do we do when we live this life? We live this life to make a living for our families, and that's good. The Bible tells us that if, you know, if we don't provide for our families, we're worse than an infidel. So we know that's a good thing to do. I mean, it's good to provide for your families. It's good to be a good neighbor to those who are next to you. Those are all good things. But what is your life all about? What's really your purpose in life? The Bible tells us what that purpose is. It is to bring honor and glory to the Lord Jesus. Well, how do we do that? We do it by knowing Him as our personal Savior, and we do it by spreading the Word of God to those who need to hear about the Gospel. That's what this is all about behind us. Actually, behind me. It's also in front of me. The Great Commandment and the Great Commission. We are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love our neighbor as ourselves. Folks, if you love people, you're going to tell them about the Gospel. If you love them and care about them, you care about where they're going to spend eternity, you're going to share the gospel with them. If you love God and you love people, you're going to share the gospel with people. It's important to remember, folks. He had compassion. And because our Savior had compassion on us, that is reason for us to rejoice. But you know what? I'll tell you another reason to rejoice. The Bible says the angels of heaven rejoice over one that trusts Christ as their Savior. Have you been thinking about your one today? Remember when I talked to you the first of the year about that one that you have on your heart that needs to know who Jesus is, needs to have a personal relationship with Jesus? Wouldn't it be an awesome thing, I guarantee you, not only the angels in heaven would rejoice if that one that you're thinking about and praying for and trying to witness to, if they would come to Jesus, there would be rejoicing down here too. And you know what? In just a few moments, we've got two that are going to follow the Lord in believers' baptism. And folks, that's a reason to rejoice. Because you know what? That means something happened in their heart. That means there was a change in their heart. Jesus came in, and now there's a change on the outside too. Folks, we have reason to rejoice today because of that. But, but think about this. When you look in verses 9 through 11 of chapter 5 of the book of Romans, there are some good things that we find that Christ has done for us that gives us reason to rejoice. Not only did He love us when we were yet sinners, but notice what it says. Verse 9, the first part of verse 9, there's the word justified. We are justified in His sight. We have reason to rejoice because He has justified us, those of us who have trusted Jesus Christ. That means we are no longer guilty before God. We have reason to rejoice because we have been justified. That is, just as if we never sinned. We have reason to praise Him today because He has justified us. But not only this, in verse 9, it also says that we are saved from wrath. Because we are in Jesus, we no longer have to worry about the wrath of God. When you read the book of Romans chapter 1, you find out that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Everyone is without excuse. We find that out in the book of Romans. But then he says this, that we are saved from wrath. Are you glad that you have heaven as your home? Can you say amen? amen? Amen. We have reason to rejoice today because we have been saved from wrath. But then there's something else that he mentions. He mentions in verse 10 the word reconcile. The word means to take enemies and to make them friends. You know, folks, I don't have any enemies in this world. Not that I know of, at least not from my perspective. There is no one that I can honestly say is my enemy. I love everyone. But if I did have an enemy, I would want to make them my friend. At least I would want to attempt to. But you know what? That's what Jesus did for us. He took us who were enemies of God, and now He's made us a friend of God. We have been reconciled. We have peace with God, the Bible says, through our Lord Jesus Christ. But then, verse 10, the last part of verse 10, there is the phrase, Saved by His life. You know what that tells me? 
that tells me that though Jesus was crucified on the cross, He died for our sin, that verse tells me that He didn't stay dead. We are saved through His life. He rose again, folks. And because He rose again, we've got reason to rejoice because one day we're going to be with Him in heaven, those of us who know Jesus. Can you say amen? I'm going to tell you, you need to be praising God. We need to be lifting up our voices to Him and praising Him. Amen. We have been saved by His life. But then, look at verse 11. This is the last thing we're going to mention this morning. But we also joy in God. That is, because these things are true, because He loved us when we were unlovable, because He loved us when we were yet sinners, because we are reconciled, because we are saved by His life, we can rejoice and we can have joy. Because these things are true. Because we are saved. We have salvation. We have a home in heaven waiting for us. You know, I'm reminded, go ahead and turn to the book of John, if you will. John chapter 14. Another one of my favorite passages. John chapter 14. Jesus is trying to comfort his disciples recognizing what is laid before him. And notice what he says. Let not your heart be troubled, verse 1. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions or many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Folks, I'm going to tell you, if you're here today, and you're trusting in anything but Jesus, then you're trusting in the wrong thing. The only way we can get to the Father is through Jesus. The only way we can get to heaven is through Jesus. The good news is He has gone to prepare that place for us. The bad news is if you don't trust Jesus and you don't go His way, you're not going to heaven. But He loves you. He loves you enough to die for you on the cross. You know what? I can't explain that kind of love. I mean, I know that I love everybody here this morning even though I don't even know some of you. I know that I love you because God loved me and I want to extend that love to everybody else. So I love everybody. But I cannot imagine a Savior, God in the flesh, who would love me enough to leave heaven in all of its glory and splendor and die for me on a whole rugged cross. I can't explain it, but I sure am glad He did. Amen? Amen. I am so glad that He did. The question this morning is, have you been a recipient of His grace? Do you have reason to rejoice today because you've been saved through Jesus Christ? Do you have reason to rejoice if you don't? You can come to an altar this morning, and I'll take God's word and show you how you can rejoice as you walk out of these doors because you know Jesus as your Savior. Folks, we as Christians, those of us who have trusted Jesus, do you ever get to the point where you complain a lot? You know, man, I wish my circumstances were different in this life. Man, I, I wish, you know, I wish I wasn't as sick all the time as I am. I, I wish I had a little more money in the bank. I wish. Things, <laughs> I've got some heads going like this. I wish I had some more money. You know, we, we're all the time thinking about what we, you know, what we don't have rather than rejoicing in what we do have. Amen? Amen. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you have been complaining and grumbling and griping because of what you don't have. And after reading the passage of Scripture, God reminded us what we do have is Jesus. And maybe you need to come and say, God, I'm sorry. Man, I need to rejoice. I don't need to complain. You know, Paul said it best in the book of Philippians. He said, you know what? It doesn't matter whether I'm abounding or whether I'm suffering need. I am always going to be content because God has blessed me. Folks, God has blessed us. We have reason to rejoice, if nothing else, because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand and bow our heads and close our eyes. No one's looking around. Every head bowed and every eye closed. We're going to have a baptism in just a few moments, but we're going to give an invitation. Folks, I never want, never want 
to leave a church service on Sunday morning without giving folks an opportunity to respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Folks, He loves you, and He loves you, and He wants you to be saved. And if you're here this morning with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one's looking around. Folks, this is between you and God, and I just want to pray for you. I'm not going to call your name out. I'm not going to try to embarrass you. I'm not going to try to get you to come forward and make a decision you're not ready to make. But folks, I do want to pray. When I pray, I want to include you in my prayer. But maybe there's one here this morning who would say, Brother Wayne, I really don't know that I'm saved. I don't know if I were to die today or something were to happen today to me. I don't know if I'd go to heaven or not. I don't know that I'm a Christian, but I'm concerned about it. God's spoken to my heart. Would you please remember me a prayer? Would you slip up your hand and write back down? Nobody's looking around. Just be. Just lift your hand up and write back down. I'm not for sure I'm a Christian, but I'm concerned about my soul this morning. And I just want you to pray for me. Anyone like that? Anyone? God bless you. Anyone else? I'm not for sure that I'm a Christian, but I want you to pray for me. Maybe you're here this morning and you said, Brother Wayne, I know that I have reason to praise God today, but I think sometimes I don't praise Him like I should. I complain and I gripe about things when I need to be praising God, praising Him in all times, whether it's good or bad. And I realized that this morning, and I just need God to, get, to help me to, to praise Him, even in the rough times, even in the bad times. And you'd say, I just need you to pray for me. Would you lift up your hand? God bless you all over the building. Man, wow. God bless you and you all over the building. God, we thank you that we are here today because of Christ. We thank you that we can get together as brothers and sisters in Christ and worship the Lord Jesus. And Lord, I pray for those who may be here this morning that does not know you. Lord, I pray that they would come before this service is over, they would come to this altar and they would trust Jesus as their Savior and leave this place different than they came in. Leave this place with a new nature, being made all over new by the Lord Jesus. And Lord, for those many, many hands that said, God, I want to, I want to give you praise and glory, even in the difficult times. Lord, I want, to, I want to lift you up and I want to praise you no matter what's going on in my life and recognize my blessings rather than what we don't have. God, meet that need in their life today. Maybe some need to come in just a few minutes, moments and just say, simply say, God, forgive me for not giving you praise. God, help me to praise you no matter what the circumstances are. Lord, help them to come. We commit this service to you. Bless and meet every need in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need to pray about something, I'll be happy to pray with you at the altar.